closing that $4.7 million deal. Sorry about that. <laughs> What's going on guys, this is Burrs. A lot of you guys have said to me that I am in the cybersecurity realm, I'm in information technology, and I should share some of my knowledge with you. So, that's what I'm doing today. So we're gonna talk about four things real quick. I don't, I don't know what that meant. <laughs> we're gonna talk about DNS, which we're gonna talk about open DNS. We're gonna talk about ads on the internet. We're gonna talk about emails and the stuff you get in your email. And we're gonna talk about passwords. So first up, DNS. What the hell is DNS, you might be saying? Well, think of it this way. Think of it this way. It is the internet's phone book. There's lots of different phone books out there. One of the ones that I like to use is OpenDNS. Now, when you're at home, you're using your internet, what you're probably using is your internet provider's DNS book, address book, right? I like to use one outside of my internet provider. And the reason I do that is because we don't live in 1997 anymore. When you think of antivirus, you think of something that's on your computer, like Norton or McAfee or something like that. And really, in today's day and age, that is a secondary tool. In the past, it used to be the first dairy tool. It used to be the first line of defense, but now it is the second line of defense. The first line of defense is actually DNS protection. So like I said, DNS is like a phone book. So what happens is, when you go and type in Google.com, your Google.com has an address. Think of it this way, when you have your cell phone, nowadays people don't know people's numbers. They know what their, um, their name is in their address book, in their phone book, and their you know, iPhone and whatnot, but they don't know what the actual numbers are. They don't know what their actual email address is off the top of their head. It's the same exact thing. So you type Google.com in on your phone or your computer, it goes out to the address book, DNS, and it says, hey, where is this located at? And DNS says, oh, that's it, uh, 60.70.90.40, or whatever it is. And then it points you to there, and that's what comes down to your computer. Now what OpenDNS does, which is what I use, is it does what some other companies do, but I believe it does it better, is it uh, takes all that information and it says what's a bad thing and what's a good thing. If it's a bad thing, i.e. it's known to have been giving out uh, malware and viruses and all kinds of stuff, it'll block. Before you even get to the site, it'll block you from going there. The other thing it does is based off of the uh, interactions that uh, all the different addresses in the internet has. Um, if someone's pushing malware out, which is the new word, you want to use malware, not antivirus. You might sound a little bit more intelligent. <laughs> you want to, yeah, if uh, if someone's pushing malware out uh, from an address, it has a certain signature, so it has a certain uh, look to it, so to speak. And if it sees that, it'll block that for you. It also has kind of in the mid tier things, and you can set this up if you want this way, where it's kind of like suspicious stuff. You can set it up to block, to block that as well. So that's your first line of defense. Before stuff gets even to your computer, you can block it. And that's the first line of defense. Antiviruses, like malware bites, which, which is wow, what I use, um, that's more of the secondary when stuff actually gets onto your computer. So think of, um, you know, if, you, if you're thinking of antivirus, think of it as a security uh, proceedings or security as two lines of defense, DNS protection from line one and a malware or antivirus, that's line two. Next up are ads. Now when you go to Google, for instance, and you go in there and you type something in, you, you'll find ads at the top normally. And they're Google ads, which is, makes this even funnier. And what happens is hackers and people who wanna put malware on your computer, they'll take ads out and they'll make them look very much similar to a regular ad. So they'll take a, an ad out for Levi's jeans. And uh, when you go there and you look at the top of your search listing, it looks like Levi jeans. But when you click on it, it takes you to a site um, that will potentially infect you with malware, viruses, etc. So you always have to be on the lookout for that. I always tell people not to click on ads at the top of search engines. Uh, if you want to go and look at that site, go directly to that site. Don't go to the ads at the top of the search engine. Google is not going to like me. Next up is emails. Now when you get emails, you have to be really, really, really careful with this. And there's a real easy rule of thumb I tell people. When you get an email from say PayPal, or if you get an email from your bank and it tells you that it needs information, click this link to go here to do this, to do that. Don't click the links. Go to your web, go to your browser, 
and go right to your, your bank. All those notifications will be in your bank or wherever you're getting the email from. If it's eBay, if it's, um, you know, like I said, your, your bank or PayPal, all that stuff's going to be in there when you log in. It's going to be there and tell you that you need to do something. So when you get emails from PayPal or your bank and it says click here to go verify this or do this or change this, realize that that might be a notification from them, but go to the website by itself and work from there or give them a call. Don't trust links that are in your emails that are from places like that because they're really from hackers. So now last but not least is passwords. Passwords are extremely challenging for a lot of people and they really don't have to be nowadays based off the information we have now and the information that's been out for a few years. And basically you just need a phrase. You don't need a password. So think of it this way, the longer, the better. And it, it can even be simplistic and I'll show you here. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and use this how secure is my password and we're gonna check some passwords. So the first one we're gonna use is Netflix one, all lowercase Netflix one. And we're gonna see how long, look at that, one minute. It takes one minute to crack that password. So let's make it a little bit more complicated. Let's do a capital N and a zero at the end. And let's see what that comes out to. So Netflix zero one, four days. So look how much that's increased, four days. Now let's do what I said in regards to using a phrase. And the phrase we're gonna use is big red barn stinks. And we're gonna go ahead and just do a capital B, big red barn stinks. Let's type that in. 2 billion years. It's going to take to crack that. Pretty crazy, huh? Now let's just do one extra thing. We'll add a 1 to the end. You add a 1 to the end of that and it takes 2 trillion years to crack that password. That's how simple it is. It's not very difficult. All you have to do is have a phrase, maybe a capital in the beginning, number at the end, number in the middle, whatever you want to do. The longer the better. That's as simple as it is. Now when I say phrase, make sure you use a phrase that's not something like, I like the Ravens. I like Corvettes. Don't do stuff like that. Make sure you use dictionary words, but not in sequential order. So like I said, big red barn stinks. It's not a normal phrase. Use a normal phrase, that's gonna be the next step the hackers and the like are gonna to use to crack into your, um, your passwords. So use something that's kinda of random. So, flashlight is bright. It's not a common phrase, but if you say I like da uh, daisies, yeah, they might use that. So, if you guys have any questions or anything, let me know. If you guys have found this informative, go ahead and put it in the comments down below or give it the thumbs up and all that jazz. Uh, if you guys uh, do have, like I said, comments, put them down below. If you guys have stuff that you like to uh, do in regards to security or programs you've used that have worked really well for you, go ahead and put them down below or better yet, make a video about it. And until next time, later. Mm -hmm.